Good morning. Welcome to worship. I invite you to stand as you're able to face the baptismal font. If you have a service folder to share, please do, or permission to use your phones, gracewoodstock.org. You can follow along online. We begin with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of our neighbors. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned, we have hurt our community, we have squandered your blessings, we have hoarded your bounty. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. Righteous God, we confess that we have sinned, we have failed to be honest, we have lacked the courage to speak, we have spoken falsely. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. God is a cup of cold water when we thirst. God offers boundless grace when we fail. Claim the gift of God's mercy. You are freed and forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Welcome once more to worship. Thanks for gathering in Jesus' name. Glad that you're here. Glad that you're worshiping at home. A few announcements for our life together in community. In one week, we have a due date for nomination forms. So by July 2nd, if you are considering or would like to encourage someone to consider a position of leadership, there are nomination forms on the information desk for council, for an endowment board, and for the nominating committee. 
So please consider how you can be a part of our faith community and leadership. Uh, there's also a due date for Allen and Riedel scholarships. If you have uh, someone in your family who's a member of Grace attending a Lutheran institution or pursuing Christian vocation, uh, those are due July 1st. <laughs> the beginning of July, we have a pop-up children's hand chime choir. So if you have questions, ask Jan or sign up. So there are three rehearsals. If you make two of the three, that'll be great. The first week of July uh, for second through eighth grade students. I invite you all to save the date for July 6th. It's a Thursday. From 5.30 to 7, you are invited to come pray and play. We'll gather outside. There will be pizza served, games, and time together. If it rains, we'll come inside, but come and share in fellowship. Thursday, July 6th. And then if you uh, like food, miss food, have a few things to say about that. Come be a part of the solution. There uh, is a need for kitchen training, and there is an opportunity to do that here. So Tyler Pallack, our director of youth ed, did the training online, and you can too. And he'll walk you through an online option on Tuesday morning, July 11th. Or you can do it on your own at home, or you can go do it in person. There are options. Come be a part of Supporting Grace's Kitchen as we look for a group of people who can do that training and clean the kitchen and open up. So give it a go. Look in the newsletter and Grace Notes for options on that. And if you already have that training, let us know. Join the list of people that we can count on to support our kitchen. All right, today uh, a few of us have been asked to leave after communion. So when you see our confirmands and families receive the gifts of God and then walk out, we're doing bathroom stops and goodbyes, we leave immediately after worship for a week of confirmation camp. So we'll pray in a moment, uh, but we ask for you to think of us and support us in the week ahead. Welcome. Welcome to worship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Teach us, good Lord God, to serve you as you deserve, to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labor and not to ask for reward, Accept that of knowing that we do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. All right, so I invite our confirmation campers to come forward. So going to camp this week with Clementine, Mackenzie, Logan, Tegan, Luca, Zach, Grace, Liliana, Wilson, and myself. Here, if Arena is helping to drive up, the Wilsons are driving, and then on the return, it's the Greens and the Wilsons, and we ask for your uh, prayers for traveling mercies as we uh, go to New Era, Michigan. And we're going to pause because we have to leave after worship. So everyone smile and look at Carrie. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, so what are you looking forward to, or do you have a prayer request? Yeah? I know, I put you on the spot. Anything? Okay, I'll tell you that we are going for a confirmation camp week. There will be campers from other Lutheran congregations. There are high ropes courses, low ropes courses. It is on Stony Lake. It's in New Era, Michigan. The camp is Living Water Ministries. So follow on Facebook. Join our group to look for updates. Uh, there are songs to sing, Bibles studies to participate in. We'll spend one day at Lake Michigan as well, and we will learn and grow in faith. And so now we will pray. Today we give thanks to God and seek God's blessings as we send these confirmation students to Living Water Ministries at Stony Lake for a week of confirmation camp. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, ruler of the universe. You made the whole earth for your glory. All creation praises you. We lift our voices to join the songs of heaven and earth in thanksgiving for the many blessings you have given us. 
Renew in us the commitment to use our gifts in the service of others, and especially of those in need. Let us be your hands to feed the hungry, shelter the homeless, clothe the naked, comfort the weary and outcast, welcome the stranger, care for creation, and be loving neighbors to all people. Bless us as we go from here to learn and play at Confirmation Camp. Bless this time together growing in faith, exploring creation, and nurturing friendship. Bless those who receive our students and the fruits of their labor, and may those who are sent receive blessing in return. May the gifts they use and share be signs of your love to all people. To you, O God, be glory and honor through your Son, Jesus Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, in your church and in the world, now and forever. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for your prayers. A reading from Jeremiah. O Lord, you have enticed me, and I was enticed. You have overpowered me, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughingstock all day long. Everyone mocks me. For whenever I speak, I must cry out. I must shout, violence and destruction. For the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and derision all day long. If I say, I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, then within me there is something like a fi burning fire shut up in my bones. I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot. For I hear many whispering, terror is all around, denounce him, let us denounce him. All my friends are watching for me to stumble. Perhaps he can be enticed and we can prevail against him and take our re revenge on him. But the Lord is with me like a dread warrior. Therefore, my persecutors will stumble and they will not prevail. They will be greatly shamed for they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, you test the righteous. You see the heart and the mind. Let me see your retribution upon them, for to you I have committed my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the needy from the hands of evildoers. Word of God, word of life. We will read Psalm 69 responsively. The Psalms are found in the ELW in the front section, beginning on page 339. Surely for your sake I have suffered reproach, and shame has covered my face. I have become a stranger to my own kindred, an alien to my mother's children. Zeal for your house has eaten me up. The scorn of those who scorn you has fallen upon me. I humbled myself with fasting, but that was turned to my reproach. I put on sackcloth also and became a byword among them. Those who sit at the gate murmuring against me, and the drunkens make songs about me. But as for me, this is my prayer to you, at the time you have set, O Lord, in your great mercy, O God, answer me with your unfailing help. Save me from the mire, do not let me sink. Let me be rescued from those who hate me and out of the deep waters. Let not the torrent of waters wash over me, neither let the deep swallow me up. Do not let the pit shut its mouth upon me. Answer me, O Lord, for your love is kind. In your great compassion, turn to me. Hide not your face from your servant. Be swift and answer me, for I am in distress. Draw near to me and redeem me. Because of my enemies, deliver me. A reading from Romans. Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin go on living in it? 
Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Word of God, word of life. Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the twelve, A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher, and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them. For nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I also will acknowledge before my father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. may be seated. And I invite children, big and small, to join me. I think the confirmation campers need to come up today, too. I guess. So good to see you all up here. Um, Especially you confirmation campers who I had in class in confirmation. So, what are some hobbies that people enjoy? Can you name some? Reading. That actually was the first one on my list. That's a good one. Art. Oh, that's a good one. Painting or drawing or there's all kinds of art. 
um, knitting maybe, photography. Um, some people like to build model cars or work with real cars, um, build model airplanes. Some might like to do things outside like fishing, that's what Mr. Hess is doing today, or hiking. So do you think God has a hobby? Well, I know the Bible doesn't tell us that God has a hobby, but if he did, do you know what I think it might be? I think it might be bird watching. And if I use my imagination, I can imagine God sitting in heaven with a pair of binoculars, and, with, and maybe he's got a book of pictures with all the beautiful birds that he created, and he's trying to see how many of them he can find with his binoculars. So let's do some bird watching today. Um, I don't think we're going to see any flying around in the sanctuary, at least I hope not. I think that's happened before, but, but not today. But I'm going to show you some pictures so we can do some bird watching all together, okay? So even the labels are here. So what do we got here? An owl, good. Okay, what's next? Pigeon. We can see lots of those when we go to the park. Ooh. Here you go. Yeah. They like to hide really up high in their nests. And the little tiny ones that flap their wings all the time. And then what else? Sparrows. Sparrows? We just heard Pastor Amanda talk about sparrows. Well, of course God would see a sparrow. There are millions of them, and you've seen them. They're common, ordinary little brown sparrows. But God must have loved them because he made so many of them. Well, one day, Jesus was teaching his disciples that they should not be afraid. Jesus said, don't be afraid when people threaten you. Two sparrows are sold for a penny, but not a single sparrow falls to the ground without your father knowing it. So don't be afraid. You are more valuable to God than a whole flock of sparrows. Well, a sparrow seems like a common bird, and it's been said God must have loved the common people because he made so many of them. But I don't think God sees us as common or ordinary. If he did, he wouldn't love us in such an uncommon and extraordinary way. The Bible says, give all your worries and cares to God, for God cares about you. We are more precious to God than a whole flock of sparrows, and we know how much God loves the sparrow. Can you say a prayer with me? Dear God, we know that we are precious in your sight. Thank you for loving us with such an uncommon and extraordinary love. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for coming up, big and little. In the Trolls movie, there's this catchy little Justin Timberlake song. I've got this feeling inside my bones. It goes electric, wavy when I turn it on. It's fun. It sings about sunshine in your pocket, and that good soul in your feet. Can't stop that feeling, so just dance. In one of Adele's songs, Rolling in the Deep, she begins by singing... There's a fire starting in my heart. And she seems to sing out this song at the conclusion of a significant relationship. This feeling in my bones. This fire starting in my heart. We are alive, dear friends, with bodies that feel deeply. How is it that you feel your emotions? Where do you carry your stress? How does your body remember things and feel all the lived experiences of our lives? The prophet Jeremiah knew about bodily experiences too. We heard today how the prophet cries out, O oh Lord, O oh Lord, prophet is growing tired. It seems he's not really sure how much longer he can carry on, but as soon as he's about to stop 
speaking about God. He says, Then within me there is something like a burning fire in my bones. I am weary from holding it in, and I cannot. There's a burning fire shut up in his bones, so says the prophet Jeremiah. Just as soon as he's ready to stop speaking, to stop speaking a prophetic word, God makes God's active presence in this prophet's life known. There's a fire in Jeremiah's bones, and he cannot keep it in. Is there a time in your life where you have known something deep within? You've known that God is calling you to such a time as this. It's worth paying attention to the ways that the gifts of God given to you cannot be kept within, that they swell up within and need to be shared. Perhaps you've known such a time where God shows up for you just when you need it to encourage you, to remind you that God is still and always with you. There's something about the way the prophet Jeremiah speaks this lament of becoming aware of God calling him, even when the going is tough. There's this deep fire burning within the prophet's bones. It connects for me to the intensity of Jesus' ministry, his teachings, and his calling as well. I think sometimes we would prefer a calm, controlled, don't rock the boat, Jesus or any sort of semblance of peace that brings us comfort. But today we hear about Jesus speaking of a sword, dicing things up a bit, division before there is wholeness and one. Jesus' words today are a part of this extended teaching where he is revealing to people what it means to be a disciple, what it means to follow Jesus, and it doesn't sound comfy or cozy. One of the great discomforts of the part of Jesus' teaching that we heard today is how he talks about setting family members against one another. For those who have healthy and loving family members, this sounds awful. For those who have estranged or harmful family relationships, why would anyone want more of this pain? And for the people who would have first heard Jesus speaking, they may have been outright shocked at the thought of disturbing these bonds that were so critical to their social system, to their livelihood, and to their well-being. Jesus' words, however, show the extent to which the world is about to change. For even those important, valued family relationships, they might get in the way of following Jesus. For in following Jesus, taking up the cross as he says, losing oneself for Jesus, all of our loyalties and allegiances are challenged. As startling as Jesus' words may be for us still, I hear this same burning from within Jesus. Jesus' proclivity for justice and compassion and mercy cannot be kept within And they're set free into the world in sometimes startling ways. For Jesus' whole life and ministry were continually challenging the status quo. Jesus broke down established systems that did not embody the ways of God's kingdom. So in the process, there's a holy disruption of the way things are for the sake of of the new way that Jesus is making. Jesus' call to follow disrupts ordinary lives, custom patterns of living, our comfortable ways of being. Jesus so fully lives out God's call to love and redeem and heal and renew all of creation that in order for people to follow, their priorities have to change. Self-serving ways are maybe painfully cast aside. Relationships are reevaluated. 
And if we're thinking about feelings within our bones or fires starting within our heart, I think there's probably a good amount of turmoil in our gut too. The call to follow Jesus may do all those things. Turn things upside down inside a bit. It may change your heart and swell up within you until you cannot imagine another way of living. For Jesus, perhaps knowing full well this inner turmoil about how to follow God's call, what Jesus could not keep inside or stay silent about, it always rises up and is shared in means of compassion and mercy. Jesus' actions, the ways he heals and teaches, forgives and teaches others, it's always what happens first in our lives. Jesus' very compassionate and merciful ways are for you, they're for me, for the most vulnerable, for all of God's beloved. And that compassion and mercy that comes first from Christ, it tends to take hold until you too cannot keep it in. You are so filled with the love and grace of God that you respond to God's graciousness with your own faithful acts of compassion and mercy, striving for the same justice and peace. This call to follow Jesus is not easy. What a wonderful word for our confirmation students today. Preparing for this week at camp, for continued lives of living out their faith. We know that at the heart of our confirmation program is a thoughtful study and prayerful preparation so that some have already said this and others preparing in a year to say yes. Yes, I believe. I believe in God's promises spoken at baptism, and I am committing to following Jesus, even when it's not so easy. But you all probably know that already. Your faith may not always be the popular opinion. You might doubt, question, be unsure if you can keep sharing God's grace when it just gets to be really difficult sometimes. And yet, and yet, take heart. Jesus has called you, called each and every one of you to be faithful, to love as Jesus loves, and you are so worthy of this calling. You are so cared for and loved by God in the process. If there is one song you'll look up and listen to later, you can look up the Trolls or Adele, but take a look for the hymn, His Eye is on the Sparrow. For in the middle of Jesus' really difficult teachings about what it means to be a disciple, how hard it will be, how everything in your life might be questioned. There's a lot of holy disruption going on, and Jesus assures you that you are worthy. You are worthy. You are loved. Jesus' eye is on the sparrow, and so we know Jesus watches over each and every one of you, too. So pay attention Pay attention to the ways that God is calling you to live out lives of compassion and mercy, to speak out against injustice, to renounce allegiances that get in the way of following Jesus. Pay attention to whatever fire might be shut up in your bones. What is the good news that you know that you're called to speak to someone else? And all the while, Know that you are watched over and cared for, for you are of inherent worthiness and great value to God. May this tender care and careful watch and this calling to follow bless you this day and always. Amen.
Let us confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed, found in the front section of the ELW on page 105. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's abundant mercy, let us offer our prayers for a world in need. You entice your church to speak truth that challenges false notions of peace. Prevail upon us with the good news of Christ's death and resurrection, that we are compelled to share the gospel with all the world. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Under your watch, not even a sparrow goes unnoticed. Safeguard plant and animal habitats threatened by melting glaciers, rising oceans, and receding coastlines. Amplify the voices of those calling for responsible stewardship of the Earth's resources. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our world is enduring violence and destruction. Rescue your people in nations experiencing conflict or crisis. Thwart the efforts of those who sow chaos and terror and guide those working to bring about peace and reconciliation. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You have counted even the hairs of our heads. Reassure anyone experiencing poverty, homelessness, unemployment, or exploitation, that every life has value. Look favorably upon all who struggle, especially those we now name aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Answer us, for your steadfast love is good. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Even when we experience rejection, your love invites us to new life. Lift up anyone who feels shunned or excluded on account of their gender, race, sexual orientation, gender identity, national origin, or any other human distinction. Make your people one. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All who have died with Christ also live with him. 
We give thanks for Hazel Postma and all the saints whose faithful confession inspired our own discipleship and raise us with them to eternal life. God, in your mercy. Amen. Receive our prayers and answer us, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. We share a sign of Christ's peace. Peace with you. Peace. Peace. Although I led by the Spirit of Jesus, all those who walk in the footsteps of Christ, all those who follow where love may lead them, are the sons and the daughters, the children of God. The Spirit of God is no spirit of slavery. The Spirit of God drives all fear from our hearts. The Spirit of God shatters all that would bind us. The Spirit of God makes us children of God. The Spirit of God bids us cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit of God makes a home in our hearts. The Spirit of God helps our spirits bear witness. The Spirit of God makes us children of God. Oh, who I led by the Spirit of Jesus, all those who walk in the footsteps of Christ, all those who follow where love may lead them, are the sons and the daughters, the children of God. The Spirit of God grants all, all of creation. The Spirit of God blesses dreams of the past. The Spirit of God sets a vision before us. The Spirit of God makes us children of God. Oh, how I led by the Spirit of Jesus. We who will walk in the footsteps of Christ, we who will follow where love may lead us, are the sons and the daughters, the children of God. We give thanks for your generosity in giving, for your offering to support the ministry God is calling us to. Let us pray. God of field and forest, sea and sky, you are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us that the word may be fed with your love. Through the Jesus Christ, our Savior and the Lord. Amen. Please stand. We remember... In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to share, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. 
Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. All people are called to Christ's table. Come, eat what is good. A wafer will be placed in your hand. And you can pick up a cup. There is red wine and white grape juice. You can place it in an empty tray on your way back to your pew. If you need gluten-free, let us know. If you'd like us to bring communion to you, let us know. All are welcome.
The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. The God who calls across the cosmos and speaks in the smallest seed, bless, keep, and sustain you now and to the end of the age. Amen. Amen. Let me hear. 
Go in peace, share the harvest. Thanks be to God. Thank you.